Hello and welcome to today's training. Today we will be going all over plateaus, understanding and breaking plateaus. So here's what we're going to be covering. Why this is important, how to recognize a plateau, what a plateau is, how plateaus happen, common mistakes and effects, and then how to overcome a plateau. So let's first start off with why this is important. Understanding plateaus are important to long-term success of any fitness journey. Our bodies are intelligent. They're going to do whatever they can to keep us alive. A plateau is essentially your body's way of protecting you. So they're not a bad thing, but if you don't understand them, then you won't know how to handle them. So let's go into how to recognize a plateau. This is one of the most important things here. Every time weight loss stalls, doesn't automatically mean you're in a plateau. So let me repeat that. Every time, a weight, every time weight loss stalls, that does not automatically mean you are in a plateau. A plateau is when something was working, but it is no longer working. It's not just being stuck for a few days or even one to two weeks. Again, I'm going to repeat even that. It's not just being stuck for one or two days or even one to two weeks. A plateau won't be considered until a period of at least two to four weeks. So determining a plateau will depend on the length of the time that, is, that you've been in a cut or a deficit, the length of the time you've been stuck, the amount of weight loss, the individual's BMI or body fat percentage, but most importantly, it's going to be adherence to protocol. And adherence to protocol is going to be a common theme that you will hear me mention pretty much throughout anybody's fitness journey and with any of my clients. Adherence to protocol, adherence to protocol, adherence to protocol. So what is a plateau? A plateau is a point in a journey where progress completely stops. You're, you can experience this in strength training, muscle building, distance running, sprinting, really anything that's exercise related, but most commonly, it'll be a weight loss plateau. This is what we're going to be talking about today. So pertaining to weight loss, a plateau would mean that you're no longer losing weight, AKA you are maintaining the same weight. So let's go over a, an important reminder on energy balance. So we have three charts here. One is for maintaining weight, losing weight, and one is for gaining weight. On the left hand side, we're gonna have energy in and the right hand side will be energy out. And on the Y axis is going to be the calories consumed. So if we are consuming the same amount of calories that we are burning, energy in and energy out are the same, that would mean we are maintaining the same weight. This would be what a plateau would be here. If you are in a calorie deficit, then you would be um, consuming less than you burn, so you'd be losing weight. And then if you are in a calorie surplus, meaning you are intaking more energy than you are putting out, you would be gaining weight. So this would mean that ultimately a plateau means that you are in an energy balance. You're consuming and burning the same amount of calories. And let's go over, how is that possible if you have not changed your food intake? So this gets into how do plateaus happen? This happens through a process called metabolic adaptation. Your body's way of slowing down its metabolism in order to um, preserve itself on less energy. This basically means that your body adapts to the environment that it's given. So this is most commonly caused by an extreme calorie deficit. So let's take a look here and we're going to be using large numbers. We're going to be using 4,000 calories, but this is just for ease of use. And so you can visualize. So if we are outputting 4,000 calories every single day and we are intaking 2,000 calories, that would mean that that red line there would be the deficit of 2,000 calories. Or we go over here on the right hand side, if we are outputting the same amount of 4,000 calories and we are intaking 1,000 calories, that red line will be deeper and now we will be in a calorie deficit of 3000 calories. Again, these are very steep numbers and I would never recommend this, but this is just an example of extreme calorie deficits. So it's important to note that your body cannot control how much energy it goes into it or food that you put into it, but it can control how much energy goes out. So in order to survive, your body will slow down and lower the energy out or TDEE. This stands for total daily energy expenditure. Energy is going to be calories. So this will cause the calorie deficit to become smaller and smaller until it reaches an equilibrium point with energy in, meaning equaling energy out. Again, this will mean that you are maintaining weight and you are no longer in a calorie deficit. So that is the process there of metabolic adaptation. So let's go a step further and show you how ad uh, metabolic adaptation is working over time. So we're gonna be using the same 4,000 calorie number. Again, this is just for ease of use and you can substitute in your own numbers here, but let's just do that. So in the beginning, let's say we start with a 3,000 calorie deficit. Yes, very steep. And we're outputting 
4,000 calories today. So output 4,000, input 1,000. Now, over time, let's say over a couple of months, maybe in a month, depending on who you are, that energy out is going to decrease over time. So now we are outputting 2,500 calories while we are only consume, while our consumption has remained the same. So our calorie deficit now has dropped to 1,500 calories. So we're gonna be losing less weight in this period. Now, if we continue to stay in that deficit of or intake of 1,000 calories, what will happen is our body's energy out will then become equal to the energy in. So our body's expelling 3,000 less calories than it's used to. So you are no longer in a deficit and you will be in a plateau. So how does your body do that? Remember that muscle mass, muscle has more mass than fat. Therefore, muscle needs more energy to maintain than fat. Let me repeat that. Muscle has more mass than fat. Therefore, muscle needs more energy to maintain than fat. And energy is calories. So the more muscle you have, the more calories you can intake. Muscle needs more calories to maintain than fat. As your body adapts, it begins burning muscle. BMR will be proportional to your muscle mass. So as your muscle is burned, your BMR will decrease. And remember, looking at this chart here, we know that BMR makes up 70% of your total daily energy expenditure. So as your BMR decreases, so does your total daily energy expenditure. And we'll break down what these other um, categories are inside of your total daily energy expenditure as well. It is also noteworthy, noteworthy, worth noting here that a high protein intake is going to be vital to increasing your BMR. So as we know, that muscle is going to, burn, going to burn more calories than fat. That means that if you are doing a strength or resistance routine and you are not intaking the adequate amount of protein needed, anywhere from 80 to 1.25% of your body weight in grams of protein every single day, then you are not building back your muscles in the correct way to recover and basically stimulate new growth so that you are actually increasing your BMR. So if you're not in taking high protein, you're not gonna be uh, building new muscle, which means that your BMR is going to stay the same or maybe decrease over time depending on what your diet looks like. So the takeaway from that is have a high protein intake. So this graph shows the components and calories of TDEE and it shows that metabolic adaptation over time, as we mentioned in the last page up above. So if our old TDEE was 4,000 calories, our new would be T TDEE would be 1,000 calories. So our BMR is going to be quartered from 2,800 calories to 700 calories. So look at that big drop right there. Most of our body's energy expenditure is going to be coming from our BMR. And just because we stayed into a calorie deficit for too long, our body adapts and our BMR has dropped. This is not what you want. Note here, our NEAT has dropped from 600 calories to 150. Our TEF, our thermic effect of food, has dropped 400 to 100. And our EAT, our exercise activity thermogenesis, has dropped from 200 to down to 50. So we already discussed BMR, but what about the other variables here mentioned above? Your NEAT, TEF, and EAT. Let's review those. So your NEAT, your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. This is going to be consuming less energy, therefore your body will move less. So you'll find you are walking less, talking less, maybe using the elevator instead of the stairs at work just because you are tired. You'll be moving your hands even less. You'll even be blinking less. Our TEF is going to be our thermic effect of food. Consuming less energy, you'll be consuming less energy, therefore burning less calories digesting food. Digestion also slows down overall because your body wants it to last longer. And lastly, your EAT, exercise activity thermogenesis. Consuming less energy, therefore, actual workouts will become less effective. Body simply doesn't have the energy in the tank to perform. So let's review some common pitfalls, mistakes, and then their effects. Continuing to try and push through and work harder. This will only exasperate the problem and leads to several health issues. So you don't just wanna try and just push harder, you want to assess what you're doing first. Quit and give up altogether. This is probably the most common that most people will go on and this causes that big yo-yo diet and causes them to balloon back up to their previous weight. You do not just wanna quit and give up altogether. You never wanna do that. This leads to gaining all the weight back plus even more than you even started with. So how to overcome a plateau. We just talked all about plateaus, how to recognize them, what they even are, but how do you break them? First is going to be routine adherence. This is controlling your controllables your sleep, your walking, your water, your stress, your eating out, 
Again, controlling your overall controllables. Out of all those things that you can control in your life, how many of them are you actually taking charge of and remaining disciplined on them on a weekly, daily basis? Next is going to be nutrition adherence. So when we're talking about nutrition adherence, are you in a deficit for five days out of the week, but then going off the rails on the weekends? Remember, only one or two days of going off the rails on eating can ruin a week's worth of progress. So that can mean that you think you're in a plateau because you're doing all the right things five days out of the week, but then two days out of the week, you're neutralizing all of that progress. So are you remaining uh, adherent to your nutrition? Are you hitting your macros on most days? Are you hitting your calorie intake on most days? Remember, if you hit your macros, you will hit your calories. That's just how it works. So if you are not adherent on your nutrition, you need to be there first before we assess any of the other stuff. Next is going to be training adherence. Are you skipping your workouts? Are you half-assing your workouts? Are you maybe using the same weight that you have been using over time? Again, this is all an example of training adherence. If you're not progressively overloading, if you're not trying to increase the weight, more often than not, you will lead to a plateau. And lastly, how to overcome a plateau. This is really the key strategy right here is going to be a reverse diet. Another time, another day, we will review a reverse diet and how to do so in a healthy manner on another training. Thanks for watching.